Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining this session um, and thanks to the organizers for inviting me to, to give this talk today. So I'm Katerina Bufea and I'm a bioinformatician at FIERS Genomics. Today I want to talk about an analysis workflow for single cell RNA sequencing data that uh, including the main analysis steps uh, that can be used uh, for any uh, single cell data set as a preliminary uh, exploratory analysis of our data, including quality control, clustering, and differential gene expression analysis. But before I get into this, I want to uh, briefly give you a background of what single cell RNA sequencing is and what are the main computational challenges that we need to take into account when analyzing such data. So as most of you are probably aware, with single cell RNA sequencing data, we can measure uh, the gene expression in individual cells. Unlike bulk RNA sequencing, uh, where we would have an average expression of genes across all cells in our sample. So this allows us to, uh, uh, to, um, to, to extract information on the heterogeneity of cell populations that consist, uh, uh, that comprise a sample, um, uh, find uh, gene expression signatures of these populations or uh, biomarkers, uh, but also see how these uh, cell types interact with each other how their state changes uh, in different uh, conditions uh, or how they transition from one state to another and many, many more uh, interesting questions. Uh, the main uh, computation, there are many computational challenges that are new to single cell data and we need to take into account when selecting an appropriate method for analyzing such data. And firstly, this is multiplets. Uh, so, uh, especially for droplet-based method, it, methods, it's common that cells stick with each other and get the same cell barcode. So, these libraries then no longer represent single cells, uh, but they show an average expression across all the cells of the multiplet and should be removed prior to any downstream analysis. Uh, a major issue uh, of single cell data is sparsity. Uh, single cell data consists of more than 80% zero values, and this is partly uh, because not all genes are present in all cells, but also because what we call as dropout events. Uh, these events are when, even though a gene is expressed in the cell, we fail to, to measure it, to, to capture and measure it. As you can imagine, this is biased against uh, lowly expressed genes because there are fewer transcripts within a cell. Uh, a, another important issue is over dispersion. Uh, so a gene, uh, the, the expression of a gene is uh, varies a lot across all the cells, and this is even true uh, between cells of the same cell type, and is caused mostly from uh, stochastic uh, effects. Um, next, uh, there is um, there are batch effects, which are very important when we want to combine multiple data sets, for example, from uh, different individuals or from different uh, conditions or time points and want to analyze them combined uh, in combination. Um, uh, the presence of batch effects makes it difficult because we cannot assume that any cell has uh, any replicates across the data sets, across the batches, as we would normally do with bulk RNA sequencing data, and it's difficult to disentangle the biological from the technical variation. Finally, uh, the data is constantly, the, the data size is constantly increasing, uh, especially now that uh, ultra high throughput methods are uh, more and more uh, accessible. Uh, we have uh, data sets that consist of hundreds of thousands or even millions of cells. So we need methods that can scale up to, um, to this number of cells. Um, so as with any data set, uh, the first uh, step for, for analysis is uh, quality control. And that's mainly uh, quality control of the cells to remove low quality cells and multiplets. Uh, the, the main metrics we use, uh, we normally use to uh, evaluate the quality of cells are the number of detected genes per cell, the number of detected housekeeping genes per cell that we know should be uh, almost the same across all cells, as these are genes that uh, are expressed in all cells regardless of cell type, and also the percentage of mitochondrial genes. So in the plot on the left panel, we can see uh, there are cells that have a low uh, number of, uh, uh, of detected genes and also a lower number of detected housekeeping genes compared to the majority of cells. And these may indicate that sequencing has not reached saturation. So these are considered lower quality cells and should be removed. 
Additionally, uh, we can see some cells uh, that have a really high number of genes compared to, to the average, and these may indicate multiplets and can be filtered out as well. Finally, uh, we see some uh, small number of uh, cells that have a high percentage of mitochondrial genes, which may indicate that these cells are stressed or dying and should be also filtered out. Optionally, we can remove uh, noisy genes, but this is not always uh, mandatory or useful uh, for an our analysis. So the first uh, type of analysis we can do uh, in order to understand the structure of our data is to cluster our cells. Uh, because uh, the data is highly dimensional, we start with uh, selecting informative features, and this is usually highly variable genes as these are uh, possibly uh, capturing the, most of the variation in our data. Then we use these genes to uh, reduce the dimensions of the data, uh, usually with principal components analysis or independent components analysis. And then we can cluster the cells based on the, we can group them based on the distance, the, the distance with each other on this uh, lower dimensional uh, space. Finally, we can uh, project the cells into two dimensions to visualize our clusters. Uh, usually with uh, methods uh, such as Disney or UMAP. Uh, so here, for example, we see uh, uh, PBMCs from a single uh, healthy donor, uh, which is one of the public data sets from Tens Genomics, and each dot represents a cell and is colored based on the uh, cluster identity that was identified during clustering. Um, how do we know clustering is correct? Uh, the first thing we need to check is whether clustering is uh, driven by any technical variation or irrelevant biological variation. So again, we can see the quality of the cells per cluster, and we want to ensure that, that cells are not clustered by quality, uh, but by some biological uh, characteristics. So uh, here, for example, we see that some of our clusters have an average higher number of uh, detected genes per cell compared to the others. Uh, we have to take into account biology as well here, and in this uh, case, uh, because these are PBMCs, we expect that some of the clusters, the clusters that will represent myeloid populations, will have an average higher number of genes, uh, which is the case here. So even though there is difference, it is uh, fine. Additionally, we may want to check if clustering is driven by any uh, biological variation that is not relevant to our project. And in that case, this was cell cycle. So we can infer uh, the cell cycle phase of each cell uh, and, and check if uh, clusters consist of cells from multiple uh, phases, which is the case here. Ultimately, we want to ensure that, uh, that clustering recapitulates what is already known uh, about the biology of the cell populations that we expected to have in our samples. And we can do that by uh, checking the expression of known biomarkers and whether they are specifically enriched in some of our clusters. So here, for example, we have checked that all our cells are CD45 positive on the uh, left panel, and then the middle panel, we checked one of the known B-cell markers, MS4A1, uh, where we see that is uh, specifically enriched in two of our clusters. And we can additionally visualize uh, this uh, as a density uh, of the gene uh, in the cells within each cluster. Uh, the same method we can use uh, to annotate our clusters to known cell types uh, manually if we don't uh, if we cannot uh, use any automated method. So uh, to better understand our, uh, the groups of, uh, of, of cells we have identified that may represent different uh, subtypes or altered states of known subtypes is to do differential gene expression analysis to find uh, what are uh, the gene signatures of these uh, populations. So this can help us uh, find extract gene signatures or biomarkers for isolation of these populations, but also maybe uh, understand the function of these cells. Uh, we can compare between uh, cells of a cluster and all other cells to see what is um, the, the main uh, gene signature of that population. Uh, uh, this is what we show on the top uh, heat map here. Uh, but we see that in that case, this shows the most highly upregulated and downregulated genes in one of the two B cell clusters we identified compared to the other populations. 
what we see is that some of our uh, some of the genes we detect are also expressed in the second B cell cluster because they are transcriptionally similar. If we want to further refine this uh, this signal, uh, we can compare only uh, cells from B1 to cells from B2 cluster to find uh, genes that uh, could be used as biomarkers for isolation of these populations. So this is what we show on the heat map uh, below. And what uh, we can see on the UMAP by selecting one of these uh, markers and projecting it on the two-dimensional uh, space. Uh, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, just to summarize, uh, single cell RNA sequencing data are very useful to understand the heterogeneity in a sample that was previously un unmasked with bulk RNA sequencing. Uh, we can identify uh, new cell uh, subtypes or altered states of known cell types. Uh, we can identify the gene signatures and the biomarkers that define this, uh, these uh, groups of cells. Uh, and we can also study how these, uh, how equivalent cell populations uh, change across different individuals or different conditions in both their uh, transcriptional patterns, but also in their prevalence. Uh, there are many uh, well-established methods and tools to analyze single cell RNA sequencing data. Uh, but the main thing that we need to keep in mind is that there is no single tool that can fit uh, all uh, data. We have to understand the biological and technical characteristics of our data in order to select appropriate uh, methods. Finally, as I said before, uh, the volume of the data is increasing, so we need methods that can scale up to hundreds of thousands or millions of cells. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to answer any questions.